When I was 16, I had a date. I get to a house, the door opens, and it's a father. The father sits me down at the living room couch and starts bombarding me with questions. What's the last book you've read? What do your parents do? What is your favorite subject in school? Your daughter at the moment, and it just won't stop. What are your hobbies? Do you have a yard? About an hour later, the father stands up and mumbles, I stayed up for no reason. You don't look like a bad kid. And he called her downstairs. What I went through that night was an elaborate algorithmic questioning. The algorithm originator, the father, probably profiled in his mind some kind of a dangerous, yardless maniac. And he was trying to rate the potential risk of the shidduch to his beloved daughter. People always try to assess what is the next move of an unpredictable stranger. Computers, on the other hand, are totally predictable. They live in a binary universe, zeros and ones. But in our world, something very strange happened. Computers predict humans, not the other way around. As much as we think of ourselves as unique, one of a kind, exceptional, we can be coded by what I call the algorithmic looking glass. Computers predicting humans. A man rents an apartment using Airbnb. How can we tell if he's not going to ruin the apartment by hosting a huge party? Let the computer decide. How do computers do that? It's a set of uh, prefixed computer steps digging through enormous amount of data concerning us and extracting insights. Algorithms operate in the background of our life. A few years ago, I was invited to a convention in Qatar, Doha. I doubted that the Qataris would let me in, an Israeli. But surprisingly, I get a signed visa, handwritten by the Emir's daughter. I'm going to Qatar. But the one entity I thought would really suspicious about me traveling to Qatar is the credit card company. I thought the credit card company would block my card right away. So I prepared for my travel. I took a money belt and hide euros in my socks. I travel there and everything works just fine. My card works just as usual. I came back home and asked a friend of mine who worked at the credit card company, how come? Nimrodi said, you've done nothing suspicious. You flew Royal Jordanian, like you always do. At the airport, you ate a shawarma. And 10 minutes later, as always, totally regretful, you had another shawarma. <laughs> you shopped at the local alternative for Gap. We know your style. The whole time, there were no transactions in Israel. So your profile was perfectly normal for you. That's what algorithms try to do for us. They try to understand what are the patterns of our normal behavior and try to sort out anomalies. One thing that could really change our life is if algorithms could predict crime. Let me take you to FAST, Future Attribute Screening Technology. It is better known by its original American name, the Malicious Intent Detection Program. It is a complex portable lab that's supposed to assess how dangerous people are in public spaces, streets, terminal, federal building. It's a complex set of long distance cameras and sensors, all of them trying to collect information about people passing by. What kind of information? Basically everything we got. Pulse, breath rate, body heat, 
uh, muscle stiffness, sweat circles, even the pitch of our voice is something they collect. Why? Because we have an assumption that those body signals connect to malicious intent. And the technology is just getting better and better. Imagine, for instance, an artificial nose that can replace a dog that was trained to sense for the smell of fear. Or a long distance camera that can manage to track from afar a person that is avoiding eye contact. What the technology is doing, it is trying to imitate how we, as human beings, have our senses and intuitions in assessing for danger. But the technology does it more accurate and 24-7. At the same time, there is another complex technology called video analysis. It looks at the scene and trying to understand whether there's a risk in a certain scenario. How can we tell? A person is running towards another person back. Could we tell if he's going to attack him or just hug an old friend? The computer would know after time, learning from past videos. And if alerts go on, the system instantly would connect information, look for information about the suspect in governmental databases, perhaps even private ones. Is still scores as risky? Step aside, sir. OK, that's fine. It probably breaks millions of privacy expectations we have. But let's just assume that we are always one bombing away from giving up our freedoms. It reminds me of an Iranian stand-up comedian I met once in New York. He said, I just finished the luckiest year of my life. Out of 11 times I traveled to the airport, 11 times I was randomly selected for a security check. But guess what? Even that doesn't make us predictable enough for computers. Because most actions in our life do not have real-time information. And we don't live in the terminal, most of us. So the technology cannot be used everywhere, or it just tends to make too many mistakes. So the system does something else to make up for that. The systems we have try to assess how dangerous, how risky a person is, and not how dangerous the action itself. We assess people. There's a TV show called Black Mirror. In the TV show Black Mirror, there's an episode called Nosedive. In this episode, it describes an imaginary world where everybody has a cute symbol from one to five that describes him. Our rating. People are aware of the rating and obsessed with it. They try to satisfy the algorithm. Every action they do in their life immediately impacts the rating. And in turn, it impacts their life. If you've seen the show, you must say, okay, it's a science fiction, it's a TV show. It is more realistic than most of us think. It is already happening. It is already happening. In China. In China, there's a great movement of people migrating to the big cities. That's created a need for credit economy. So the Chinese started that project similar to something we know in every Western country, credit scoring. But the problem is that the most of the villagers in China, they never had a bank account or they never had payment history. So how can you decide who to lend money to or to rent out a flat? So the Chinese government decided to do something different. They approached the technology companies in China and they asked them to look at the information they have, mobile, internet, social, purchase activities of their users and come up with social scoring. 
you, you buy diapers online, you're probably a good family man. You have a lot of friends online that you play online games with for 10 hours straight, not so good. You shared an aggressive post, you can see a rating takes a nosedive. At the moment, the leading project called Sesame is not a must. But the Chinese government plans in three years, by 2020, that every citizen in China will have his score, a number between 350 and 750, a number for each citizen, his score. People that will have high score, they'll have great life. They will be able to work in governmental jobs in China, and they will be able to get an extended line of credit. People with low scores, not so good. People with low scores would not be able to get passport and travel abroad, and they would not be able to sleep in luxurious hotels. And it's not only that. Your rating is expected to drop or rise depending on who your friends or family are. Hey, you, look around. Do you feel comfortable sitting with someone that has a score of 352? Have you thought how your score will be reflected by his score? Let's be honest. We do not predict. We profile people. We do not predict. We profile people. Profiling and rating systems are going to be a growing part of our lives. And it's not only China. They'll be everywhere. They are efficient and they are needed. And the technology they are based on, predictive analytics, is already mature enough. It's already marketed as off-the-shelf software. You can buy it the same way you buy Microsoft Office. So soon, every entity, private or public, will start rating us. They will start creating risk models and try to see how we score weighted with these risk models. Every entity, your government, Tinder, eBay, Uber, everyone. Every entity will score and weight you. There will be algorithmic looking glass wherever you go. In the last 15 years, I personally devoted my time to study the relationship we have with algorithms. Well, not exactly 15 years. I was sick for a day. The most important observation to me came from a group of fellows at Yale who had a sticker on their computer saying, do you want your life be dictated by an algorithm? Don't you think you are entitled to know that a computer made a decision about you and not a person? And what the decision is based on? And where did he get the information about you from? And who let it gather all this information? <coughs> Others might be concerned with what I call the distorted looking glass. They question the scoring itself. Who is behind the algorithm? What are his interests, his agenda? Maybe the designer of the algorithm is a racist and he doesn't even know? Can someone hurt your rating on purpose? And if your rating is wrong, can you question the decision? Is there anyone you can talk to about your rating? Is there anyone there at all? Through my research, the nature of the opposition became clear. 
If algorithms are the new policing power, we believe they need to answer to the rules. The same way we limit the real policeman and its power. The same way we forbid private businesses from arbitrarily discriminating their customers. We believe it's our right to police the policing algorithms. If there is an algorithmic looking glass, watching, observing, reflecting you all day, today, and you don't even know it, you are in a much worse situation than those people in China. They at least know the ranking and can understand its logic. But we, we are surrounded by so many rating, profiling, scoring algorithms, by so many entities, and we don't even know. We may end up trying to play the looking glass, try to manipulate the algorithm. We may end up just as any website trying to tweak the Google algorithm to be ranked higher in a search result. Even if you accept the claim that you can't figure out how it works because you'll get in its way, aren't you still entitled to legal protection from unfair, invasive, discriminatory, arbitrary algorithm that is going to affect your life? We are at the age of the algorithmic looking glass. We must take action and define now what our rights versus the algorithmic glass. We must regulate it now. Otherwise, it will be too late. Thank you very much.